Hey mamas, this video is to go over the IEW portion of essentials that we would have covered in class tomorrow. We're going to be on lesson four, Roman aqueducts. There is a new structure this week, which is gonna be over here, the title, um, the title rule repeats one to three keywords from the final sentence in their paper. So the rules, which you can find the stuff that is on this board on page 36 of your ancient history-based writing lessons. First, you have to capitalize the first and the last word in your title. Second, you will capitalize all other words except articles, a and and the, Coordinating conjunctions, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so, are fanboys. And prepositions, such as about, above, across, you know what I mean. So, work on titles this week. So when they get to the end of their paper, the very last sentence in their paper, you're going to take one to three keywords and make their title with that. We also have a new structure this week, the who, which clause, which you will see information um, in your ancient history-based writing lessons on page 37. The who, which clause provides um, additional description or information, and there are some rules with that. The who, which clause starts with a who or a which. Who is for people, which for things. It gives information about the noun. Um, there's examples in your book, ancient Romans, who, and then it goes on to give some information, or Roman aqueducts, which, um, they're added to a sentence that is already complete. So if you just put a who or a which in a sentence by itself, it, you're gonna have a fragmented sentence. Um, and a non-essential who, which clause, which is what we're going to be dealing with this week, is usually set off by commas. On page 173 of your Teaching, Writing, Structure, and Style book, there are advanced rules for the who, which clause. So if you've got a third tour student that already has a good handle on who, which clauses, um, you can look at the invisible who, which, and the essential who, which at those rules. So for this week, our at home work on lesson four, there's some really helpful tips in the ancient history based writing lessons on page 18 and on the bottom of page 34 um, regarding using numbers in your paper and also um, contractions in written papers. So see those notes, read the source text with your student and go over this week's vocabulary words, create a keyword outline. Remember three keywords per sentence. We're still going sentence by sentence this week, but words like Roman Empire count for one word. So if it's a title, and it's more than one word, it only counts as one. Symbols are free, numbers are free, and so are abbreviations. Then don't forget to read the keyword outline back, have the student read it back to you, trying to make complete sentences. Remember, if it doesn't work, it just means we need some better keywords. Um, don't skip this step. It's a great way to practice their presentation skills and get you getting used to looking at keywords, then looking up their audience and making up a sentence. Have them write their rough draft, add in their vocabulary and dress ups if they did not. Remember easy plus one. So if your student is a first year student or a second year, and they're not comfortable doing the LY adverb yet, just keep practicing that one. 
and don't worry about the who which clause this week. Once they have written their rough draft, they hand it off to you, the editor, and you revise it and edit it, mainly for mechanics. Um, remember Mr. Pudua's hands-on structure, hands-off style. Um, once you've made the corrections you want them to make, hand it back to them and they can either write or type their final copy and then go over the checklist. The checklist is a great tool. It is a reminder of what needs to be included and how to label the vocabulary and the um, dress-ups in their paper. And when that's done, you're done. And we will read papers when we meet back again for week three. So everybody stay safe and we'll see you in a few weeks.